Look, I thought I should do a, a long, uh, well, I don't know how long, a recording with just a list of all oh, practical things, many of them, but things that I do that you might find worth considering, you know, uh, for the reason I probably give, but for whatever reason. Um, for instance, I sunbathe. I sunbathe in summer or winter. I don't give it more than, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes, and less if the sun's strong, you know, I don't want an excess of UV. But I think it's very necessary for the the body, health-wise, to have sunlight. And I definitely feel that most people don't get enough um, for health and well-being, and, well, you never know what the spiritual consequences of these things are as well, dear. What else is there to consider? Oh, well, I'm fruitarian, you probably know that. I'm fruitarian when I'm at home in large measure. I will cook vegetables if uh, I really feel a, a desire for such, um, typically steamed. Um, cold weather, I might make porridge. Winter, I might have a, a soup to hand, which is um, possibly, you know, a dal bean-type base with um, vegetables in. And uh, typically, I find I liquidise it, and, or I put herbs in, you know. It might be sage, it might be um, oregano, basil, some mix of such, or, you know, um, parsley, uh, um, what's the other one I have? Oh yeah, coriander. Okay. I very often juice, you know, I mean, in summer I tend to have citrus juiced. For breakfast I prefer citrus or, um, for instance, in New Zealand, very good fruit. Um, you know, if I can't get decent, uh, I tend to go for organic. I just feel it's safer, you know, healthier and so forth. Um, I would like to be GM free. I'm not certain as all my diet is that, you know. Um, hmm. A raw diet, fruit. I don't drink tea or coffee, consume salt or vinegar. I don't mean I won't touch it if I know there's salt or vinegar in it, but I won't put it in and uh, I certainly don't want much of it. Um, at a push I'll have, um, I'll put up with the fact there's cheese in something or some butter in it, but I'd rather not. So I avoid such. I tend to feel I should be in bed by about 10 o'clock. Quite often I'm in bed by 9 o'clock. When I wake during the night, I'll, as you know, do my um, career-type breathing exercises if I so choose. But I very often find it's not particularly successful. And I, I turn to uh, my recordings. That's my my expression and mode of communing with God. You know what I'm doing at the minute, <laughs> strangely enough. doesn't seem very godly, does it particularly, but um, it can be any moment sort of thing. As you know, I try to cultivate a habit of being aware of all that's good and lovely and thanking God for it. And I try to avoid conversations that end up with the full conspiracy theories and evils that may or may not be in the world. Um, I don't mean I cast particular doubt on them, I just don't want to be preoccupied with such. Um, if I think something's wrong and I can do something about it, well I do. Um, I joined, uh, what was it called, the One Party, just because of their sincerity. Not because I have the same theology, but I recognize some of the values that they have, don't I? Obviously, I 
out there. So, I mean, it's not that I won't act, it's just that I won't, um, I won't be preoccupied with that which presents itself as harmful and troublesome. Also, if it's good and lovely, think on these things. I don't spend hours and hours in meditation, prayer, Bible study. Um, I just don't. Uh, my career breathing might be 10 minutes, might be 40 minutes, as, as, as it as fits, not as a ritual that must be observed. I do a few postures in yoga that Mum taught me as 12 year old, 11 year old, and I've been doing on and off since through life. If I really want something spiritual to read, you probably know I read uh, John 17 more than anything else. Perhaps a little of John. Uh, Paramahansa's autobiography, I'll just pick up wherever I've got to reading through again for a while. Might pick up the Gita, Bhagavad Gita, providing it's Arnold's translation, Edwin Arnold. I try to visit people that are a spiritual, a blessing. visit those that I think may be in need. I've got a friend who's in hospital, um, psychiatric sort of ward, and I see him. Um, an elderly lady who suffering dementia, but still very lucid when we chat. I see her. To one parent families I try to support and help in some way. I'm not full of social deeds and work, but I do love to do what spontaneously comes to hand, you know. Persons sitting on their own in a cafe. I try and make some bid to sit with them and just say hello and and, and, and see if they respond, you know, and if they do join them and we may end up chatting for an hour and a half. <laughs> I like, of course, to give my um, card to uh, people that tell them what my YouTube reference is, so to speak, to encourage uh, people to follow my recordings, because, of course, I've done them to bless people, and it's been the only form of um, advertising of such that I put my mind to, which you may think is very limiting, but well, I, I don't know what's better really, and uh, I want whatever it is to be of God, and I think he'll open up to me um, better ways if he wants what he considers to be better ways. Uh, I think I've given away Yeah, I've probably given away it's approaching a thousand of such cards. That's surprising, isn't it? But I think I must have done. And I've just recently bought another thousand. And um, I hope that will be a blessing to people, of course. I try earnestly to listen to people. When their conversation is negative, I try to, as subtly as I can, steer it onto something a bit more wholesome. Of course, I love encouraging people, coming to their rescue. <laughs> I love giving a hug to those who want a hug. And I try to be incredibly sensitive to those who may be needing a hug. I like to hold the view when I hold them that the love of God is surrounding them and blessing them through and through, that they 
feel his nearness and loving kindness. I love to sing, as you know. Love to worship in church. Love to fellowship in church. Well, I love to fellowship anywhere, but... Yes. Oh, I, I don't kill. Where I possibly can, I don't kill. Um, it might be necessary to kill to defend, of course, but apart from that, I avoid criticism like the plague. I mean, criticizing others, I try to avoid it. Well, I'm not keen on having it myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I graciously try to consider whether this is given out of malice or out of loving kindness. There's not much criticism given by people that's out of loving kindness. Um, hmm. I try not to eat to excess. I try not to do anything to excess, of course, but um, well, by definition, isn't it? Um, I try to be patient when driving. Love giving way to people, letting them out, you know, getting into the flow of traffic. And, uh, there's a great desire to bless people, great pleasure in blessing, isn't there? Lovely. To be, in some sense, the right hand of God is just wonderful. I rescue worms drying out on the pavement. <laughs> I put insects out, I don't kill them, of course. I mean, unless I really get concerned about my little girl being bitten by mosquitoes or something, you know, I may have to uh, kill a few mosquitoes. I try not to. I try to just patiently put them out. Cockroaches, yes, the same. Ants, well, I'll wait until evening when they've gone to bed and I wipe the surfaces down with them. Um, Something repellent like a mix of fairy, of uh, washing up liquid or vinegar or something, or even salt, water, something that will repel them. They're not daft, they don't like poison. I don't have answers to um, pests like possums and rabbits and goodness knows what. Um, I'm just so thankful to God that I don't have the situation where I have to make such decisions. That Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And I want to be part of that. Yeah. I don't like watching fiction in general. I can't stand watching violence or sadness. Um, I don't like watching documentaries where I feel I'm being misled or conditioned in some way. I'm very cautious of the media. I'm very cautious of politics. I'm not a non-conformist unless you define such to be one that resists conforming as far as one reasonably can, where it's not right to conform. I recognize the dilemma that other people are in and remind myself of the grace of God who does not stand before us telling us off or even insisting on guiding us. We can seek guidance and we can know where to find it in general. He doesn't stand before us and lay down the law. My God is a loving God, as you know. I could own no other. And I agree it's the personification of what I value. He is that. And part of what I value is that he will guide me into closer understanding of what is truly best. Because he loves us and because we're his children. I don't worship scripture, ministers, gurus, pastors, leaders, teachers, people in authority. I try to put God first, to love.
loving heart, soul, mind and strength. Of course, be mad not to, wouldn't we? Avoid uncertainties where possible. I'm keen on change, but small changes that avoid much of the uncertainty of major changes. I endeavour not to rush. I endeavour to be mindful of him. And that's part of my practice, of course, of whatsoever is good and lovely, I think on these things. And thank him accordingly, of course. Be filled with gratitude. I consider that the greatest problem of the 21st century is isolation. Loneliness that people suffer from. And creatures, of course. I'm appalled at the way we don't care for life. Yeah. Talk to people when you can, preferably face to face, not on the phone. Preferably on the phone, not texting. <laughs> Preferably not texting. Sorry, not ignoring rather than texting. There's a hierarchy, isn't there? An order. Try not to keep things that you don't use. Don't clog up your life with junk. But certainly don't be so meticulous that you spend all your time being neat and tidy. That's a waste too. And don't be a perfectionist. Whatever you do, don't be a perfectionist. Perfection at one thing is at great cost of other things. Optimize. Spend your time to the best use at any given time, moment. And prioritize, therefore, in such a way that you do this. Don't be an obsessive planner that spends all this time planning and recording but not living. But do note down the important things, especially the things that God says to you and guides and leads you in. You don't want to just risk the memory holding it at the right time. Give it all the help you can. And most of all, love God and those around you. Don't be too worried about understanding. It's your heart that counts. Your values, what you love. Bless you. And I'm sure you'll be blessed. And I'll be blessed. Thank you, Dad. Now look, I'll keep adding to things. One of the cross my mind is that I don't drink in general tap water. I don't think chlorine is terribly good for you and anything else that might be in the local water supply. I drink um, purified water, in particular distilled water. I don't generally drink it as it is. I'll make a herbal infusion with it. Um, I have an unusual thing I've been doing the past year or so, which is I, when walking, I tend to feel that the toe part of the foot should come down first, not the heel, unless I'm walking extremely slowly. Same with running, not that I do much running at all, but I run landing on the toe and the heel mm, does come down to the ground possibly at least much of the time, but not with a shock or with weight. It's just might get that far, you know. In other words, I use the spring of the arch of the foot when I'm walking. Hmm. Looks slightly unusual. <laughs> <laughs> if you accentuate it, it might look very unusual, so <laughs> you probably don't want to do it in the more populated places, but whatever you think. I try to go for man-made fibres, uh, next to the skin, especially cotton, uh, a woolen cloth or blanket I think is better than uh, some artificial fibre, and so on. Uh, back there on diet, remember, uh, organic fruit seems good, especially, you know, growing it yourself. 
in the garden, use the fence for vines, you know, grape vines and um, passion fruit and so on. Um, grow the fruit in your part of the world that grows best there. You can tell from, you know, what farmers grow and something that doesn't need lots of uh, chemical support. In fact, none. I don't waste food scraps. I just dig a hole near the drip line of a tree and fruit trees especially, of course, and uh, let the worms do the rest, cover over with earth and uh, turf, put the turf back. Um, keep the grass from the roots of the trees, especially with apple trees. Um, don't prune more than you need. Have a good fruit picker so you can pick high. Don't have to feed the birds half the crop, you know. <laughs> um, grow your own herbs if you have that opportunity too. Yes, I follow the uh, Dr. Dadimo diet of um, blood groups fairly closely in the sense that I avoid um, I'm O blood group, sorry, not O, I'm B blood group, and uh, I therefore avoid tomatoes and um, um, try to avoid pumpkin. It's rather in everything in New Zealand if you happen to be eating out. But anyway, you could check out the diet that's appropriate for your blood group. Avoid yeast. I, of course, avoid caffeine. I minimise the fat in my diet, in a sense. I found that uh, I have in the past, um, from, from youth onwards, suffered from varicose veins, and both parents did. And um, I don't suffer with the varicose veins if I keep oil to a minimum in the diet. I don't not eat nuts, but I don't eat a great, great many. I'll have some honey, but I'm mindful that it's so costly to the bees. I don't have much honey. Spoon a day. I try to avoid sleeping on an electric blanket that's on. <laughs> I shop in places where I'm welcome and know the people serving me or able to get to know them and care for them. Oh yes, I missed out that I also do um, Paramhansa's energisation exercises. They take about, well they take me about 20 minutes, I suppose they only take about a quarter of an hour. <laughs> I don't know if I do them too thoroughly. Um, um, I don't do them twice a day as, as recommended, although I do sometimes. Uh, I'd like, uh, if I don't do them each day, I feel slightly, mm, I've missed out, I should have done. Um, the same with the yoga postures too, they I find very helpful. I've had back trouble, as a very tall person I am, you know, six foot three, I was, I'm probably still, I don't know. Um, back trouble since 30s you know, somewhere early 30s. And um, it's been severe in the past, but in fact, uh, early on it was a major part of my practice of thanking God for difficulties, you know, that, you, you know, I could be out walking home from school and suddenly my back would go and I couldn't move. I'm standing on the pavement on a main urban street, not able to move. <laughs> and you can't lay down in the street, can you? And you can't move, you can't even get to the side of the pavement to where the, the wall of the shop is, you know. And you just think, thank you, Lord, what do I do now? Thank you, Dad, I'm going to trust you for this. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And of course, the pain. And uh, somehow it frees up and you manage to get all the way to the railway station, half a mile away. You get on the train, by the time you get off, well, you got a third of a mile walk up the road to your house, but 
you manage it somehow. Put a hot water bottle on it. Go to bed next morning. You can very carefully, but you can manage. And you thank God through it. So that was a great part of my practice. You know, this, if, if I should point that out, I should say, I, I thank God for difficulties. Now that, you might think, is absolutely off the planet. But I do. And it's quite miraculous at times. And I would commend it, recommend it to you. <laughs> you know, you break something, you say, oh, thank you, Lord. I wonder why you've had that be broken now. Thank you, Father. Trust you for it. I love not panicking. I love minimizing collateral damage in emergencies. Being absolutely cool. What's best to do? Right. Prioritize. Careful. Be aware. And thank God to it. You know, you bring God, awareness of God, into the situation. You want to see the situation through His eyes. Yeah. You can be very tolerant, calm and graceful simply by an awareness of God. Well, you're more aware of God than the problem going on or the person who's ranting and raving. Mm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Yes, I find I don't drink or take drugs, take medical drugs, painkillers. Don't have to swear or blaspheme or don't have to get angry. I just choose not to. I don't have to criticize. I just choose not to. I feel extremely free to help people rescue, even if it seems out of place. I can take certain social risks that other people can't. I've uh, a confidence in that way. I can find my concern for people overrides my um, shyness and so that I don't seem at all shy. I can speak publicly, spontaneously, off the cuff. N almost no preparation at all. It just flows out because I'm concerned for my audience. If I've got ears to hear, I could bless. I'm not missing the opportunity. I don't mean I ram the gospel down their throat. I try to give them the option of <laughs> ignoring me. <laughs> and I try to be sensitive when they've switched off and there's no point in continuing. Yeah. I love worship. I'm never happier than when I'm with a group singing where I've got the words to sing. I don't want to listen to others singing. I wish to sing with. I'm extravagant in worship like no Pentecostal is. I'm demonstrative because I'm free to be. I just am. <laughs> I don't want to praise or flatter, but I do want, so want to encourage and rescue and help and be a blessing. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. And as you can see, I'm not humble. I'm not conceited. I'm not shy. I'm not, is it bashful, is that the word? I can address 400 people without batting an eyelid. I can match anybody in debate. <laughs> Partly because I care for them. Partly because I care for my audience. Partly because I'm so aware of the God is with me. 
I speak for him if I possibly can. I remember reading a book, a Salvation Army book, by a chap called Larson, and it's My Best Men Are Women. And it was about the women Salvation Army evangelists back in the 1900s. Yeah, perhaps the late 1800s. Would it have been? But you know, they were fantastic. They were so courageous. I mean, trying to help the poor, bless them with spiritual riches since had nothing else to give them. Absolutely wonderful people. Wouldn't be my theology, but that's not the point. It's my values. Just love them to bits. Amazed by stories like Smith Wigglesworth. That's an amazing name. You've probably never come across it, but evangelical Christians have. He was the sort of guy who'd say to the vicar, you got faith, vicar? Uh, yes, why? Why you got that um, lightning conductor down your church then? <laughs> sort of chap who would turn up where some lady was dying of some terrible illness and he'd heal her on the spot. Fantastic guy. As you can see, I love the miraculous. I mean, really, who doesn't? But if you get a miracle, write it down. Put it somewhere where it will not be lost, where you can access it and remind yourself when you need encouragement, this is what God does for you, loves and cares for you. Bless you. And... Cardinal, the Jesus message, which is that God is your heavenly Father and loves you, loves you, loves you. You get that right and you're on the right path. You can solve every spiritual conundrum by bearing in mind, hang on, he's a loving heavenly father. Then you get everything in the right perspective. That's what Jesus came for. And all the rest is as nothing compared to that. There's all sorts of teaching in there. Fine. Some of it's valid. Some of it's probably been miswritten misinterpreted, misunderstood, <laughs> a few other misses I expect. <laughs> but the basic foundation is, he's your dad and he loves you. That's what counts. And it's realizing that that makes keeping the first principle of loving God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. Dead easy. Spontaneous and perfectly natural. And I do emphasize it does say your God. Not someone else's, but your view of everything that's right and noble that you would ascribe to your God. That's the one you need to value and it's the only one you can value in truth. Bless you. I'm sure he'll put it right. Anything you've misunderstood, I am just so sure you'll quickly find the answer and put it right. Bless you. Thank you, Dad. Oh, and I speak for God. If ever anyone believed in channeling, it's Marshall. I am the prophet. I speak for God, my God, of course. <laughs> the one who 
personifies all that I truly value and love and am devoted to. I am not shy in claiming that I speak for God. I am a prophet. I am the prophet. It's my job. I've been sent, if you like, to tell you everything he's taught me. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, Dad. And do you realize you are sent to? And that he does a greater thing in you than through you? When you're busy helping and blessing someone, he's molding you for life eternal in heaven, in his wonderful family, his joy his reason for living, and ours. Thank you, Dad. Love you. Thank you, Dad.